Hello everyone, uh, today I'm going to be going over the SMS receiver class in the second part of my Android application tutorials. <clears throat> so what we're going to be talking about is this receiver here, this SMS receiver. Basically a receiver just allows you to, to filter incoming text messages, emails, and other stuff like that. So the receiver is just saying, hey, uh, the receiver in this package is this SMS receiver. Uh, so, and then exported, set to true. I can't remember what that does, but I remember it was crashing if I didn't include that. The intent filter priority is set to 999. That is not actually that high of a number when you consider that it can go up to almost 30,000, I think. Um, so mine has just kind of a, a decent priority so that allows it to intercept text messages before the Android system. The action is Android provider telephony SMS received so that I can check to see if it was an SMS that was coming in. So that's that for the receiver and to actually get this to work you have to have these uses permission uh, receive SMS, send SMS, and read SMS. You might not need send depending on what you're doing, but since I was sending a text message back to the Nano line, I needed to have send. So now on to the SMS receiver. We have it extends the broadcast receiver class, and I just have a string Android provider telephony SMS received so that I don't have to say it down here. I don't have to check that. I just made it equal to that, or equal to SMS received. So if the intent coming in to the on receive uh, if the action of the intent is this Android provider telephony SMS received then we can do something with that so in order to actually get a text messages message you have to have a bundle and then whatever your variable name would be uh, and then that would be the intent extras so an incoming text extras would be the phone number, the the name, the message, and everything like that. So then if the bundle isn't empty, then we want to do something with that again. So we want to create an object called PDUs, and that would be an object of the bundles stuff, I guess of the PDUs so that that would basically be grab all the PDUs from the bundle and put them into this object and then you have an array of final final just means it's not going to change ever so SMS message uh, messages so that would be an array of SMS message and then equals a new SMS message that is however long the object of PD uses so basically you're making an array however many spots of however many text messages there are so if there's one text message coming in that's less than 160 characters or 161 because the 160 is where a text message splits so if you have a text message that's 160 characters it's one text message meaning there will be one spot so the this loop will run once and create a messages uh, zero the first time it would go through would equal the whatever the PDU has in it which would be you know the message and, and everything like that so that is one message and then it would go again if there was multiple messages coming in but the way I was doing it only had about 27 characters in it so it wasn't needed to worry about from there I used a shared preferences Oops. Uh, shared preferences my preference and then you want to just equals preference manager dot get shared get default shared preferences of the context because you're also packing passing a context to it um, then you want to make a string of the phone number that would be in the preferences and to actually do this you have to have inside of it's under res layout 
preferences, I think. No. So it's under um, it's under menu. It's video preferences. All right, never mind. Basically, you just have to have a key in there somewhere, and I actually can't remember where it's at. Oh, it's an XML. That's why preferences. There we go. So the uh, edit text preference would be the phone number that I want to have, and you can't actually see this because there's nothing on it really. But we'll just do that. So you have the preference phone number, and then you can edit the phone number. The selectable equals true, so that you can actually edit it. Um, then just a summary and title, telling the user a little bit what it's for. Um, so you want to get the string that's in there and actually in there is a phone number uh, and then what you want to do is if there is a number in there then it'll grab it which it won't always be this this default value because this default value can change if there is nothing in there and it doesn't know what to do then just grab a blank message and just say hey we don't care about it so then what you want to do is you want to make incoming number equal the messages dot zero or messages zero so whatever the first message is that was coming in the originating address which would be the phone number you want to see if that equals number and if it does then we want to abort the broadcast because we don't want it to we don't want it to notify the android system I put this in a try statement because it needed to be or the app can crash depending on what the text message says uh, for the if statements that I was using. So I put it inside a try catch and just made it if there's an error then it just says something went wrong. Um, but the first thing you want to do inside is abort the broadcast and then make SMS message equal the message body. And for this, for the to purposes of explanation, all I did was make it, uh, make a toast, which is basically a little pop up on the screen. So that's the SMS receiver. So thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions, post them in the comments or yeah, just or send me a message. Uh, that's it for today. So I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.